From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Oh my, I love the first headline that I'm going to be presenting to you today. Some of them uh, are a little down, but this one is really up and I appreciate it so much. It has to do with the man that we all are familiar with. Dr. Billy Graham's vision for spiritual revival in America. The first headline. And then the next one, the mortal threat from Iran, oh my. And will the next Pope rule during Armageddon? Well, that is a very good question. I'm gonna put Jack right on the spot with that one in just a few moments. But let's go back to that first headline, if you will, please. We're going to be honoring Dr. Billy Graham. I did not realize until I read this article, do you know how old he's going to be in November? 95. And he is praying that he will reach that wonderful ripe old age because he would like to present something across America via television. And it is to present a revival for our time, a great spiritual awakening in America. Take a look at him. In my spirit, I know God has called us to do this. And I pray he will stir your heart to join us. Our neighbors, our nation need Jesus Christ. What a wonderful vision this man had and certainly he's had an effect on so many millions around the world. Probably one of the best known preachers, if you will, evangelists, and even in the White House that's ever been known. And you know, Jack, you started out with this man and so did Chuck, didn't you? Yeah. First of all, Billy Graham is going to be 95 years of age this coming November, and he wants to deliver one last message of revival via television to the entire nation, probably the entire world. Yes, Chuck and I started with him as uh, young teenage guys. And I want to tell you something now. The years have passed, and Chuck is the oldest man in our ministry now. Uh, is getting close to the age of Billy Graham, but I'm not going to give away these secrets. I'm just glad that God <laughs> has preserved me so I look so much younger than Chuck. Hey, we've been buddies for 50 years, and I have to have a little fun <laughs> along the way. Right. But seriously, the thing I love about Billy, he always preached the gospel. He's never been unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ like so many of our ministers are today. He said... Jesus said in John 14, 16, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. You could always count on Billy Graham preaching the gospel. And what is it? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, I declare unto you the gospel. And then tells us what it is in verses 3 and 4, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul could say in Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To get that salvation through the gospel, which Christ did on the cross as he shed that precious blood, you've got to believe and receive him into your heart. For Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And there is no other way. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And listen to me very carefully. Some of these preachers get up and say, Galatians 3.26, we're all the children of God. Isn't that wonderful? Doesn't matter what religion you are. Bunk! Let me give you the whole verse. You're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus and his work at the cross, the death, the burial, and then his resurrection. And listen, if you don't preach that, you're never going to see the inside of heaven. Because Paul, again, through the Holy Spirit said in Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, let him be accursed. 
as we said before, so say we now again, if any man preach any other gospel except the death, burial, and resurrection, let him be anathema, accursed. Look it up in Webster's Dictionary. It means to be damned, doomed, and burned in the fire. Enough said. Thank you, Billy. Oh, my. What an effect he's had on millions around the world. Now, friends, with all the threats coming out of the Middle East toward the United States, Iran, and so forth, and then, of course, after North Korea had their nuclear test that brings them a lot closer to a nuclear bomb, I really believe that this cover is very appropriate on the cover of the Weekly Standard. A gathering storm. How very, very true. Threats from all over the place coming toward us. Al-Qaeda leader urges Muslims to wage holy war against who? The United States and Israel. And the mortal threat from Iran. Again, Iranian leader promotes nuclear plans. And the Iranian leader, we must prep for end of time. Of course, that comes from their supreme leader over there who says, we are developing nuclear weapons for a purpose. And Khamenei, Zionist regime will disappear from the map. Now, the Zionist regime, of course, that's Israel. And again, Ahmadinejad, Israel's existence is an insult to all humanity. My, and again, Ahmadinejad, Muslims should mobilize to destroy Zionism. And again, Zionism is Israel. And experts say Iran's missile arsenal poses threat not only to Israel, but look at that, to the United States. Now, I, I really feel this from the bottom of my heart, that we need to ask Jack this according to the Bible. Do you believe that we are facing World War III and maybe even Armageddon, Jack. Rexella, World War III is the Battle of Armageddon of Revelation 16, verse 16. I'm going to have a lot to say about Pope Benedict XVI and Armageddon later in the program. Right now, I want to say this to you. I've been preaching a message entitled, The Coming War with Russia, according to the Bible, for over 60 years, and I've not had to change anything. Now, I could get into the depth of this, but I'm going to keep it very light and simple. The Bible teaches that a nation called Russia is going to lead World War III. And that's Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. Chapter 38, verses 1 and 2, uh, we are hearing the terms Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Raj, all cities in Russia today. And Raj is Russia in Greek, and Russia in English. And they come from the north against Israel, Ezekiel 38, 15 and 16. And that is directly north of Israel. If you draw a line from Israel to the North Pole, you go right through Moscow. All right? It's going to be a horrendous war. And it's the war of the latter years and the latter days. It's nothing that has been fought. It's going to be fought. And the Oriental armies join with Russia. Revelation 16, 12, the come out of the east, the kings of the east. And that takes in all these Oriental nations for largest armies in the history of the world. And the war is described in Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18. Loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates, where our troops are now stationed. Why? To slay a third part of mankind. Wow! And how? This is what they do in order to destroy that many people, 35% of the population of the world. How? Verse 18, by fire, smoke, and brimstone. This is repeated throughout the Old and New Testament. You can't miss it. The whole land shall be devoured by fire, Zephaniah 1, 18. That's the entire Middle East section of the world plus whatever's going on beyond the Middle East. Malachi 4.1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, verse 7, a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. Armageddon. Revelation 16.16. 16. Now, we find that the Arab world is going to align with Russia and the Orient. And that's why you see Russia defending 
Syria right now. They said, don't you dare touch them. Why? Because Syria is going to be united with Russia also, Isaiah 17, 1, as well as Egypt, Daniel 11, verse 40. When you study Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, it's the entire Arab world all united together for one thing. What? Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. Eighteen times in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Israel is the battlefield of Armageddon. It's going to be horrible. That's why Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. None. It's the time of Jacob. It's trouble in Jacob's Israel. 2 Kings 17, 34. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was, but at that time thy people, the Jews, Israel, shall be saved. Thank God for that. Kissinger said, they will use it. An ambassador to the United Nations for America said, they're getting ready. And the North Koreans, who are experts now at building atomic weaponry, have been moved into that area of the world to help this little Hitler build the worst thing in history, to try to destroy every Jew on earth, Psalm 83, 4, and the big Satan, the United States of America. And that is why Pope Benedict, as I said last week, cried out, Oh, you cardinals, pray! You don't vote for a pope who will destroy the Catholic Church. He knows what's coming. Right, Jack. Well, the resignation of the pope was quite a surprise uh, to the Catholic Church and to everyone globally. Now, let's take a look back very, very quickly. Here he is as a young priest, Cardinal Ratzinger, and then going on. New direction for tumultuous times. The Pope, citing health, is first in centuries to resign. A final act transforms the church. And Europe remains challenge for the church. In Europe, they're empty over there in their churches. In Pope, Cardinals seek manager for media age. And Pope Benedict faces crowds in Vatican, faces confusion. While there were 50,000 people there saying, we will miss you. Experts, top five picks for the next Pope. Here you see Pope Benedict XVI stated long ago when I was a Cardinal, I realized that the role of the Holy Spirit in the conclave is to prevent us from electing a pope who will completely destroy the church. Now, Bishop Sheen predicted such a day would come. Now, here he is. Remember him, Bishop Fulton Sheen. Powerful words I'd like for you to read with me. The false prophet will have a religion without a cross, a religion without a world to come, a religion to destroy religions, there will be a counterfeit church. Christ's church will be one, and the false prophet will create the other. The false church will be worldly, ecumenical, and global. It will be a loose federation of churches and religions forming some type of global association. You get that word global? A world parliament of churches. It will be emptied of all divine content and will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. The mystical body on earth today will have its Judas Iscariot, and he will be the false prophet. Satan will recruit him from among our wow. bishops. Wow, recruit him from among our powerful. bishops. Wow, yes. Pope Benedict XVI said, I want you cardinals to pray so that we do not elect a pope who destroys the church. Wow. Secondly, I used to listen to Bishop Sheen. He was the greatest orator for Catholicism and television ever. And he said, the final pope will defect from the Christian faith. He will be our Judas Iscariot, as you heard us read. And he will turn against Christ in the church. Okay, now listen carefully. Is that possible? You can talk all the language you want. Jesus said, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts far from me. Titus 1.16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. And one more, 1 John 2.18, Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. They went out from us. They weren't of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued from us. They went out and turned their back on it to prove that they weren't really of us, Catholic or Protestant. Ah, but the good news is, this is the Pope who rules when the Lord Jesus breaks through the blue 
and comes to earth to set up his glorious kingdom for 1,000 years. Revelation 20, verse 4, come quickly, Lord Jesus. What a positive note to end on, knowing that the Lord is coming soon. And if he comes, is he in your heart? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Have you asked him to be your savior? I'm gonna ask Jack to pray that all important prayer right now. This is why we're in your home, that you can accept Christ as your savior. Jack. Look at me and pray this, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And your coming is so near, I'm not ready. But Lord, I bring all the sins I've ever committed because you're a loving and forgiving God. You died. To wash away my sins. Jesus, I receive you now as my Savior. Come into my heart this moment. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer with Jack? If you did, there's my address. Write to me. I'll send this little book to you. First steps in a new direction. You want to walk with the Lord every day. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. All right, I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And, of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order, and it is Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. God's gift to a dying world, do you ever feel like that? A dying world is the life-giving Savior. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.